As chosen by Patreon supporter Lane Williams, this week we're taking a look at the basics on those military menaces, the Combaticons. The original Combaticon toys were designed for the Japanese toy line Diaclone, but Diaclone was cancelled before they could be released, leading them to instead debut as part of the third year of the Transformers line in 1986. The team consists of perfectionist leader Onslaught, an anti-aircraft truck, aloof aristocratic space shuttle Blastoff, always angry tank Brawl, gleefully sadistic helicopter Vortex, and the jeep Swindle, an opportunistic con man. Together, the five combine to form the massively powerful but simple-minded Bruticus. Onslaught becomes the torso of their combined mode, while the smaller Combaticons form Bruticus's limbs, each one able to transform into either an arm or a leg, all totally interchangeable, even able to mix and match with the other combiner teams designed the same way. The Combaticon's character designs for the Generation 1 cartoon and comic book famously don't really look anything like their toys. But that's because the only reference material that was available to the designers was a line art of prototypes of the toys. So they had to invent a lot of the details, each revision pushing the designs further and further away from what the toys actually looked like. Keep an eye on my other series, The Art of Transformers, where I'll do a deeper dive into this phenomenon in the future. The Combaticons debuted in the Generation 1 animated series shortly before the end of the second season. The cartoon presented the team as a group of renegade Decepticons who, millions of years ago back on Cybertron, had turned on Megatron, and who, as punishment for their actions, had had their personality components removed from their bodies. In the present day, the treacherous Starscream, seeking to build an army of his own, recovered the components and installed them in refurbished World War II vehicles. The reborn Combaticons initially worked with Starscream to overthrow Megatron, but after being defeated and exiled from Earth, they broke ties with him and set out on their own mission to conquer Cybertron. It took the combined forces of the Autobots and the Decepticons to stop them, following which Megatron had them reprogrammed into loyal soldiers. In this new, obedient state, they continued to make appearances throughout the third and fourth seasons of the cartoon, right up to its final episode. They and the other combiners also received a major marketing push in Japan, where they were known as the Combatrons, and starred in several pieces of exclusive media, including the direct-to-video episode Scramble City, and the sequel series 1987's The Headmasters and 1990's Transformers Zone. The Combaticons had a rather different origin in the Marvel comic book, in which they were built by the Decepticons on Earth debuting in a story that saw them battle their opposite numbers, the Protectobots, in a video game world. Supplementary stories published in the UK version of the comics explained that they and the other combiners were created based on a vision of the future given to the Transformers by the Matrix. The Combaticons toys were discontinued in 1988, but were made available again in Europe and Australasia in 1991, as part of the Classics series of reissued toys. A few years after that, in 1993, they were re-released again as part of the Transformers Generation 2 toy line, in new, extra-loud colour schemes promoted with an unforgettable rap commercial. That would be the last that would be seen of the original Combaticons for some time. Over the next two decades, there would be a variety of other military-themed groups and characters who would use the team's name, but most of them had little to no connection to the originals. The exception was the team of Combatrons who appeared in the Japanese series Car Robots in the year 2000. New characters, but ones who were all recolors of the original Combaticon toys re-released once more. When the series was released in Hasbro markets as Robots in Disguise in 2001, the toys underwent some significant color changes, and the team was renamed the Commandos, consisting of Mega Octane, Rollbar, Movor, Rotor, and Armorhide. 
who together form Ruination. As seen in the animated series, the team were originally Autobot protoforms sent to Earth to locate the hidden battle station Fortress Maximus, but their stasis pods fell into the hands of Predacon leader Megatron, who reprogrammed them into evil Decepticons. The Commandos are remembered today as distinct characters from the original Combaticons, and have even returned with new toys and media appearances in conjunction with 2015's Combiner Wars toyline. More on that in a minute. 2004's Transformers Energon featured its own very loose reinterpretation of the Combaticons in the form of the military-themed Destruction Team. This team was made up of armoured personnel carrier Barricade, tanks Blight and Kickback, and helicopters Blackout and Stormcloud, who combined to form Bruticus Maximus. But rather than individuals in their own right, the Energon cartoon presented the five as all being controlled by Bruticus Maximus's singular intelligence. Bruticus was one of four combiners from the ancient past of Cybertron, who all entered stasis together to stand guard over a subterranean reservoir of Super Energon. Awakened by Megatron in the present day, Bruticus Maximus and Constructicon Maximus chose to side with the Decepticon leader, but were destroyed by Superion Maximus for their betrayal. Tighter connections between the Energon characters and the Generation 1 originals would later be forged by recolors and re-releases of the toys, which changed the characters' names and colors to match those of the originals. Now, during this period of time, the original Combaticons hadn't been completely forgotten. They put in appearances in various comics, including stories from the official Transformers Collectors Club that expanded on their cartoon backstory, revealing that the team were former Autobots who had been swayed to the side of evil by Megatron's rival Deathsaurus. Certain members even received new toys, like Onslaught in Transformers Universe, and Swindle in both Transformers Alternators and Transformers Animated. Swindle in particular did what very, very few Combiner Team characters have ever done, and really took on a life and popularity of his own outside the team, with several prominent solo roles that make him more than qualified for a dedicated Basics episode of his own in the future. But it was in 2012 that the whole original team came together again in the Fall of Cybertron video game which redesigned the Combaticons with Cybertronian alternate modes, and placed Vortex, Swindle, and even Bruticus at the player's control, in a series of levels that saw the team attempt to bring down an Autobot Energon transport. Toys of the team's new designs were released in the Transformers Generations line in a variety of colours, and represented the first modern attempt to upscale the classic Combiner play pattern, and though the result was, charitably speaking, a little awkward. It laid the groundwork for 2015's much more successful Combiner Wars line, in which a full combining roster of Combaticons was once again released. In Japan, these new figures were even recolored to become new versions of the Commandos. The release of the Combiner Wars toys was supplemented with a story arc in the pages of IDW Publishing's comic books. The Combaticons had appeared in IDW's comics from early on, starring in stories that saw them serving as part of the Decepticon Secret Service, and later working for North Korean dictator Kim Jong-do. The team didn't have the power to combine in these early tales, but that changed after Starscream made an attempt on Swindle's life, fearing that the con man was about to leak all his dirty secrets. Swindle was left brain dead by the attack, and Onslaught, seeking revenge, used the mystical Enigma of Combination to forcibly merge the Combaticons with their wounded teammate. The result was a dangerously unstable Bruticus, who went on a rampage until being brought down by Ironhide, following which Starscream had the Combaticons reprogrammed into his loyal personal security team. In an unexpected twist to the usual team dynamic, IDW's version of Blastoff was revealed to have a crush on Onslaught, and willingly went along with Starscream's plan in order to be with him. It's hard to miss the Generation 1 cartoon's influence on IDW's portrayal of the Combaticons as a group of renegades matched off against Starscream, but that's nothing new. 
Of the four 86 combiner teams, the Combaticons were easily the ones who were most fleshed out by the cartoon, so it's always been the primary influence on their appearances in modern media, including a recent starring role in the original Bumblebee graphic novel, Win If You Dare. Whether this trend will continue if and when the team eventually return to our TV screens, we'll just have to wait to find out. And those are the basics on the Combaticons. Who's your favourite member of the team? What's your favourite Combaticon story? Let's hear it in the comments. If you're not already, remember to subscribe, and if you want to sponsor an episode of your own, check out the basics on Patreon.